Whispers. With me now is Lauren Rossborough. She's senior currency strategist for Westpac. Thanks so much for being with us. So I actually want to start with the Fed. They're meeting tomorrow. Uh, what are the chances that we could get some more monetary stimulus from them? I think very small. Now the Fed have always said that they will uh, have another look at their balance sheet, what their options are for their balance sheet, but that doesn't mean that they will necessarily expand their balance sheet going forward. So the question is, are they going to downgrade their growth outlook, which we anticipate they will? And that is one step further towards the potential to expanding or further quantitative easing in the future, but not tomorrow. So more QE perhaps in the months ahead, maybe the early next year? Well, if we start to see the numbers continue to slow down like we did on Friday, then certainly that is a possibility. The Fed definitely wants to keep this economic momentum going. And, uh, you know, by the end of this year, we certainly look at looking at growth in the U U.S. about half a percent on an annualized rate. So a very, very somber growth numbers come Q4. What about other forms of stimulus? We had Joseph Stiglitz on uh, Bloomberg last week saying that, that a better designed stimulus program, another round, need, need, is needed in the U.S. And then over the weekend, we heard from Robert Rubin and Paul O'Neill, the former U.S. Treasury secretaries, and, and they, they disagreed with that. What do you think? Well, I think to some extent, you've got to let households and firms go through this balance sheet consolidation process. So we're always going to have slow growth. We're always going to because have... Because people are deleveraging. That's absolutely right. And, uh, and to that extent, what the Fed needs to do is to stop a deflationary spiral and to stop uh, consumer sentiment falling through the floor. But until you know, uh, consumers and householders sort out their balance sheets, it is going to be a slow and very long road. There's no, no way out of the uh, slow and bumpy recovery then. What about the dollar? Where is it headed over the next few months? Uh, we had John Taylor at FX Concepts this morning saying that uh, he said for the next couple of weeks it's, it's going to be weak, but then it's going to rebound, he said. As, as, as things get worse, the dollar is actually going to go up. What do I, you think? I agree with that view. We are in summer months, and the market tends to wax and wane, or it tends to trend. And what we've seen is given there's the sovereign risk from Europe has uh, dissipated somewhat, the market's focused on relative growth stories. And the U.S. is underperforming a particular relative to Europe on that front, and hence the dollar's been sold off. But once again, if these sovereign risk issues do come to the fore, and or if we are starting to get concerned about a double dip in the global economy, then you could see the dollar being bought on a safe haven and treasuries being bought as well. And are you a subscriber to that double dip scenario? Are you a no, not at all. We no. do think growth is going to be anemic, um, so your output gap's not going to close anytime soon. We are in this big bath sort of approach where you go down, you go along for a very long time before you actually come out the other side. Uh, so tell us about the euro. Do you, do you think it has peaked? I mean, it's, been, it's mostly been driven by the dollar. Mm. Absolutely, it is the anti-dollar trade. And uh, it, you know, if you look at Euro 130 to 2030 was the level that everyone was looking at to the top side. We've pushed through that. If you look at very short-term models, uh, you know, looking at relative interest rates, because the short-term spread has certainly moved in Euro's favour, you're looking at around about 135, 136 at its peak. So that is still some upside from here, potentially over the next two months. Interesting. We've got the German trade data out today. That's supposed to show a rebound because the euro, of course, was lower only a few weeks ago. Mm. Now we've got a higher euro. Are you concerned about the impact on Europe, on the economy? Uh, the trade balance itself, there's so many different factors going on. We had a seasonal adjustment factor which threw out the import numbers last time. So we should see some, I guess, uh, less uh, in terms of the import side, not as, not as much growth. But if you look at the trade balance itself on a three-month moving average basis, it's gone nowhere since November. So there is the potential for upside, given the P uh, PMIs that we know okay. came out quite well and also given that uh, the euro was so low come June. All right. Lauren Rossborough from Westpac, thanks so much for joining us.